What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be discussing how and also the best way to level up to the maximum level slash maximum power level, everything will be explained shortly, in Destiny 2. Now don't worry, this video isn't going to be advocating skipping content or how to reach the max level in an hour and a half or something absurd like that, but rather this video's purpose is the following things. Firstly, to quite literally explain how Destiny 2's leveling system works, it's a little complicated, and secondly, provide some huge tips for those of you who don't want to waste their time. And so, let's get started. However, I should mention that the background gameplay is brand new Nessus Patrol gameplay courtesy of Activision, and so now let's really get started. Firstly, when you just begin Destiny 2, you're going to encounter a very traditional leveling system, getting from 1 to 20. Now when you're leveling up from 1 to 20, this is going to be like pretty much every other game. We're doing quests and adventures and killing enemies and doing pretty much anything gets you experience towards your level. This is where the like Pop-Tarts double XP promotional material actually comes in for just 1 to 20. Now after you've done the campaign and some strikes or whatever you need to do to get to level 20, then things are going to get a little more interesting because on the way to level 20, your gear is also going to be ascending in how good it is. The quality of your gear will go up. And once you start to reach level 18, 19, 20, you're going to get some gear that is then going to have a power level. Because again, once you reach that maximum level of 20, Destiny's leveling system is going to shift focus. Instead of being what level you are, it's going to be what power level you are. Your power level is determined by two things. Firstly, the attack value of your weapons, and secondly, the defense value of your armor. Now, unlike Destiny 1, which it was all gear displayed light level, in Destiny 2 it does seem to be broken up into attack and defense. You know the attack or defense values on your gear because it is displayed every time you get them. So you have a weapon, it'll say its attack value number. And your power level is essentially an average between these two things. However, your power level isn't just to show off how good your gear is. Your power level will actually determine how much damage you deal to certain enemies and also how much damage you take, exactly like light level in Destiny 1. So if you're fighting enemies with the power level that is the maximum, let's say 300 in the raid, if you are lower than the power level of 300, lower than the power level of the enemies you're fighting, you're going to take more damage than usual and you're going to do less damage than usual. Once you get up to parity with those enemies, you're 300 and those enemies are 300, then you're going to be doing your maximum damage and taking the normal amount of damage. So increasing your power level is very important, especially if you want to do those end game activities like Trials, The Raid, The Nightfall, and so on. All right, so that's what power level is, but how exactly do you increase your power level? Well, it's complicated. The short answer is essentially just to get armor and weapons with a higher power level than you are, you put those on and then you become a higher power level and keep going that way. So what activities can you do to earn higher power level gear? Well, there's essentially two steps. Firstly, there's the step to 260 as an overall power level. To get to 260, a lot of different things are going to get you gear that can reach that number. Decrypting engrams, doing activities like strikes, leveling up your planet factions, all of that stuff is going to get you gear up to the power level of 260. And remember that as you're leveling up to 260, the leveling system has been substantially improved. 
you will get gear that drops based on your current overall level, but not just your current level, the game actually takes into account all of the different gear you have. So you don't actually have to be wearing your best possible gear like you did in Destiny 1 when you're decoding an engram, for example. The game already knows that you have a higher light helmet that you're not using because you don't like it. You don't actually have to put on that highest light helmet to get the best gear. So most normal activities get you up to 260, but what gets you the rest of the way to the maximum power level of 300? Well, the short answer is milestones. Milestones are special weekly activities that you can do to get the best possible gear in Destiny all the way up to 300. You can see an example here of some of the milestones that are going to be in Destiny 2, but notice that the gear rewarded is actually a little bit different, and this is very important. The legendary gear awarded presumably will not get to the maximum 300 power level, and it's rather the powerful gear. It's said specifically that flashpoints will give you end game 300 power level gear. And right there you can see that flashpoints, when you complete from 0% to 100%, you will get that powerful gear. Also, near the top, Call to Arms. The weekly Crucible activity, completing that, will also net you powerful gear. Other activities, like Nightfalls, will also get you powerful gear. Anything really with a weekly reset, keep that in mind, will again get you that powerful gear, and powerful gear means it can drop all the way up to 300 power level. Now this is really important because of how the whole leveling system works. The grind, grind, grind to the plateau of 260 and then trying to do those special weekly activities to get gear up to 300. This is a huge tip, guys. This is going to be the difference between you having a smooth transition and getting raid ready for September 13th and those of you who don't. You absolutely need to ensure that you are doing all of the different activities, all of the milestones that award powerful gear when you've already maxed out at 260 power level. The reason being is because all loot drops are based on your current level as we've previously discussed. So if you go out and do a flashpoint early because you're a good player and you only have a power level of let's say 245 when you complete that flashpoint activity, which is just doing public events, probably doable at 245, and you're awarded with powerful gear, that powerful gear won't drop automatically above 260. It will drop based on your 245 power level. So even though it's powerful gear and it can go all the way up to 300 and it's the only gear capable of dropping beyond 260, you could get it at 250 because you did that activity too early. So ensure you hit 260 before going after powerful gear. Additionally, because of the limited ways you can actually get this powerful gear, you need to ensure that you're doing all of your weekly activities. You may hate the Crucible, but if Call to Arms gives you powerful gear, you're going to have to tough it out if you do want to be raid ready. There's only going to be two, two weekly resets before September 13th, which is when the raid comes out. So if you do want to take a crack at it at that opening day, you're going to have to do all of the activities you can to be as leveled up as you possibly can be. Now there is potentially one other way you can get high power level gear, and that is Xur. Xur, Agent of the Nine, is going to show up to Destiny once every weekend. He's going to be in a random patrol area. When it is the weekend, just Google it. Hopefully someone has found him already. You don't have to go search the entire world space. Now, Xur is going to sell end game exotic gear, and this presumably will be very high power level gear. If you want to buy stuff from Xur, he's going to take legendary shards. This is a new type of currency in Destiny 2. How you acquire legendary shards is simple by dismantling legendary gear. Each one is going to net you two legendary shards. If you do dismantle an exotic weapon or armor piece, you're going to get 10 legendary shards. So keep that in mind as well. 
but you may want to, well, not may, you're definitely going to want to check out Zer when he comes on the first and second weekend of Destiny 2, see if you can buy anything that will help with your power leveling. And with that information, another tip for you guys is not to ignore the non-power level milestones. You saw that some of them are just awarding legendary gear, but again, you can dismantle that legendary gear to turn into legendary shards and to buy stuff from Zer that will be quite good. And one last tip for you guys, the power level of engrams is determined the second you pick them up. So there's no point in hoarding engrams or saving them until your leveling starts to slow down. They will drop at the same level you were when you got them. And so guys, that is how the leveling system in Destiny 2 works as well as a bunch of tips for how to get the most of leveling in D2. Guys, if you learn something new, please remember to support the channel and myself by simply pressing the like button down below or especially pressing that share button it really, really does help. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. Now, if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.